It's Katie Clancy, Chief House Hawker at the Cape House at William Ravis, and this is your August 6th Market Report. Let's look at what is going on out there because there's a lot going on out there. There are records being broken all over the country and Cape Cod is no different. So let's start actually by looking at buyer activity. This is pending sales. Tells you how many buyers, you know, what what is there a lot of buyers out there? Yeah, there's a lot of buyers out there. And they it ebbs and flows all the time. And then it ebbed pretty seriously in April and then absolutely went bonkers. In June, we had more properties under contract than we've ever had. And I think we went up by one <clears throat> in July to break the record again. Pretty crazy. A lot of buyers out there. And if you're a buyer or a seller out there, you are aware of what is going on. All right. So let's look at what does that mean for inventory, homes for sale? As you might imagine, over the course of a year, we see peaks and valleys, and the valleys are usually in December um, when everybody's sort of, you know, hungry down, holidays, whatnot. Well, and it's usually the highest in the summer, July and August. We are at July with lower inventory than the lowest December that we have on record here. I'll move my little face over here. Lower than the lowest. Kind of crazy. Very crazy, actually. So what does that mean when we have very high buyer activity, very low inventory. What happens to prices? You're right. They go up and up and up. Look at this spike. This is our median um, medium, median sales price right now is at 483. That is a jump of 15% over the course of a year. That is huge. That is massive. People are paying and overpaying, but is it really overpaying if that's what people are paying? Maybe that's what the value is now of these houses. So what does that mean for you as a seller or a buyer in this market? Let's talk about that. So if you have a house that you have talked about selling, even if you haven't talked about it, this would be a time to actually give some serious thought to selling. And what would what would you list it at? Like, how do, how do we figure out what the right what the right price is. So here's what my advice would be to you. There is data to support a certain number. I think you can safely add 10 to 15% to that number and still get activity on the house. And in, in lots of cases, sell it for over asking. I will confess that I actually got caught uh, unawares myself. I'm trying to do math and price out some houses I was going to put on the market. I'm like, I cannot make this worth a dollar more than X. What is going on? And then sure enough, they go and list it for X plus like 20%. And that sucker went under contract. And I went, okay, all right. I guess there is something to this. And I'm seeing it happen over and over. So my point is, if you have a house that's in decent condition, condition in a decent spot, where it's reasonably attractive to people, and it doesn't have too many problems going on with the lot or the location. You should have zero trouble selling your house for more than you ever dreamed of right now. Um, that said, there are a couple of caveats to that. If you have a house that needs work, they are getting passed over. Houses that need work are not getting the attention that houses that that's always been true that they, they that house, you know, turnkey houses are all, always popular. People don't want to do the work, but we're having few and fewer people right now in this moment who are interested in doing really any kind of work, which is interesting to me. So those houses that do need even just cosmetics are kind of sitting a little bit longer. But now let's go to buyers. That is where your opportunity is. I have a little piece of hair in my lipstick driving me crazy here. Um, buyers, if you have been a buyer out there and you have lost a few bidding wars, you know like what a brutal scenario you've got out there. I was talking to a colleague of mine out in Tahoe, which is a very similar second home kind of market. They have gotten to the point where they are they are they are only entertaining completely non-contingent offers. And by completely, I mean not contingent on a home inspection, not contingent on a mortgage. They won't even talk to people who need to get mortgages. It's crazy. I, this woman was actually in order to make it competitive for her buyer was asking attorneys to open escrow without a deal 
which means start doing the title search, start doing the work, the things that take time. Title search takes at minimum two weeks. Correct me if I'm wrong out there, attorneys, but that's my understanding. So the fastest closing you could do would probably be about two weeks. She's opening escrow on things beforehand, before she's even got the offer, before she's got the contract so that she can approach the seller and say, we can close in two days. Like that's the length that they're going to, to, to get things closed. We are not quite there yet, but we're absolutely seeing people drop their, um, drop their, their inspection contingency. I actually had a client who's getting a mortgage, but dropped the mortgage contingency. Talk about a nail biter. People are taking some seriously huge risks for better or for worse. It really depends on what's in your heart. What do you want? What's important to you? What are you willing to do and risk in order to get that? peaceful, happy place that you need. And I am not here to be the judge of that, but I am here to just let you know the numbers look like this and we don't know what is coming down the pike. We have some indication that that this will actually last for a little while, at least a little while, as long as inventory is low. Um, but there's so many variables out there. We don't know what unemployment's going to do. We don't know what's going on with the pandemic vaccines. That's going to change a lot of people's perspectives. So if you're a buyer and you're out there and you're paying these big, heavy prices, that's great because I, I mean, it's great. You know, real estate agents are doing great. And it's great for you if you get the house that you really want and you get that peace of mind that you crave so much. But I just want you to think four, four or five years down the line, when and if you decide to sell, we just can't guarantee that you're going to be able to recoup all that money. So my advice to you is we're always working in three currencies. One is money, one is time, and one is emotional capital. A lot of people are really investing a lot of money so that they can get that emotional capital, that peace of mind. Well, then my advice is go get it. Go get that. Spend a lot of time in that house. Really enjoy it. Bring your family. Do, do the things that you've always wanted to do and get the value that you're paying for in that house, okay? Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it for you in money down the line, all right? Uh, all right, buyers, if you want to be competitive, you're going to have to take some risks. We talked about that. But here's the thing. Just like I talked to the sellers who might have a house that needs a little bit of work or is in a kind of on a weird lot or in a busier road, those houses are getting passed over and they are not going for crazy numbers. That is where the opportunity is for you right now. But I would also caution you on on a house that's get problematic topography, whether it's just in a, in a ravine or in a weird lot, that's never really going to change unless you can, some of these can be changed. And I would look into that if you're going to buy one of these, that's always going to be a sort of just like a piece of hair on it. Like I said, like like a uh, one little thing that makes it a little bit harder to sell and a little bit less valuable in general to the public. So be careful. Don't pay too much if you're, if you're doing that or make a plan to tune that up and change it as much as you can. Um, but the houses that need a little work, I think that is where the gold is for buyers right now. A house that just otherwise is fine, but needs work, even a lot of work, if it's livable and you can get through it by doing one project a season or one project a year, you can control your investment on that. And furthermore, if you can pay cash for your improvements, so you can buy these houses with a mortgage, pay cash if you want for your in, for your improvements, then you don't owe any interest on your improvements as opposed to buying a turnkey house, you're paying interest on all the work and everything. So I don't know, that's, that's my advice. That's where I think the opportunities are for everybody. At the very least, if you're in the market right now, buyers, sellers, of course, I'm going to tell you work with a real estate agent, but it is more important than ever to work with someone who has a clue about what's going on because there is a lot going on. Nothing is predictable. And we are having to look at stats every day, at least every week to see what's going on in order to make uh, predictions. And I've never studied it, the market as hard as I am studying it right now. And you should be working with someone who is doing that and understands what the implications might be of all of the different choices and how you can take the best advantage of what's going on right now. If you want to talk to us about that, come see us at thecapehouseteam.com.